Okay, um, so some of you guys wanted to see uh, how my turbo build went. So I'm just making a quick little video. Um, first, I got the turbo. It's just a TDO4 out of the Saab 2001. Works good. It's, it spools pretty quick. Spools by like 3K. Then uh, I got, to get it to fit, I bought a just a T25 turbo manifold. Just it was 50 bucks. So I just bought it, and then I made a little uh, adapter. I made my own flange out of a bunch of sheet metal, and I just stacked it, welded it, and it worked out fine. Then I used a bend from the old downpipe, and then stuck a uh, a uh, drilled out to the correct holes, drilled out to the correct holes to match up the turbo from the old downpipe, and then uh. That worked out pretty good. Then I got a, uh, yeah, so after I got that, that pretty much holds the turbo in place. It's really solid. I uh, I ended up having to build the exhaust. So it's a triangular flange that goes on the turbo with hole, 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 and that mounts sideways on the turbo. So here's the turbo. This is the passenger side and there's the exhaust so I had to bend it around then change our view to the side view the exhaust goes behind the turbo and down diagonally towards underneath where the uh, the uh, downpipe goes on a BP so then I ran the exhaust down back that way and built that and that took a that took a minute but I have about that much clearance I I'd guess so it worked out pretty good. It's again, it's pretty pretty solid in there. My oil line came from the high pressure oil switch. It's on the back of the BP. All you have to do for that is you gotta unscrew the oil switch. It's um on the back of the engine. If you're looking at the back of the engine, it is to the left of the oil filter, and it's a little sensor with a spade connector. It actually has a spade connector. You don't have to cut the wire and put it back together every time, like I did, like the first. I didn't realize there was a spade connector on that sensor till till I just did this turbo swap, and I've been t I've taken out the engine ten or twelve times, so I would love to not twist and taped the sensor back on and off every time I did it. Either way, all you need to do is go get a brass T and uh, some brake line. I think I got this 70, 72 inch brake line steel. And then you just run that to the turbo. Then I just put the old fittings that I got from the junkyard on the turbo and um, I just made it fit. So that's my high pressure oil line. My drain is literally I tapped the oil pan with a brass nipple like a drilled hole and screwed the nipple in. That's all the effort. It doesn't leak. It's fine. It works good. So coolant just I got one side coming from the, the water pump area and I got the other side of the turbo coolant going to the other side. It's on right where the coolant goes. I literally um, didn't have, I couldn't find another T at any of the AutoZone places, so um, I just cut a hole in the tube, then took a brass fitting and a brass nipple, like they screwed together. I put one part of the fitting through the hose, then I screwed in the brass nipple and put some sealant on it and it doesn't leak. So that works. It's really bad but it works. It wasn't that bad. It really wasn't that bad. The hardest part was probably making the curve of the exhaust because I did it with an angle grinder and um, a lot of guess and check. So it really wasn't that bad, I don't think, because the oil pressure's easy. The oil drains even easier. if You just put a brass nipple in the oil pan. Then moving on to doing my intake, there's again, there's probably this much clearance between uh, the block and the exhaust, and there's about the same amount of clearance between the hot side of the intercooler and the exhaust. So it's um, you can really, it's hard to get your hand in there to mess with anything in front of the exhaust because uh, it's all pretty tightly packed and woven together, like the oil drain and the coolant lines and all that stuff. So the intake, it uh, it really it comes out pretty much straight down out of the turbo because that's how it's oriented, and I didn't want to mess with it. So then it, 
I got a curve that goes pretty much a 90 degree to the side. Then it does a 180 forward, and that goes into the intercooler. Then the intercooler comes out the other side. I got rid of the uh, wiper reservoir because it doesn't work, and I've never used it, so I just ripped it out. I cut a hole with the angle grinder through where the uh, reservoir was, and then I just stuffed the intercooler pipe straight up through. And then you got the mass airflow sensor. Just make sure it's on the right way, but that goes in. That's on the pressurized side of the intake. I got an apex blow-off valve. I bought it. It came with um, this kit of turbo stuff that I bought. I never ended up using. I didn't end up using the turbo that I bought with it, but it's really just cobbled together. The intake is. It um it barely fits, but it fits, and the front mount looks pretty cool. I think. Let's talk about how much I spent on this build. I picked up the. Uh, I picked up a Garrett turbo, the front mount, this Apex blow-off valve, a Gretti Type R blow-off valve, and a bunch of intercooler piping, clamps, etc. And um, yeah, clamps, etc. And I picked that up for 120 bucks, so that puts us in the hole 120. Then I decided that turbo wasn't good enough because it had it had more shaft play than I was told it was gonna have, but. I'm sure I could have used it, but I just wanted to find something with all the right flanges and hoses so I didn't have to make it up so much. So I went to the junkyard on a half off day. I picked up a whole Saab, Saab 2001 9.3 turbo for um, $51 and like 26 cents. I got everything I needed off of that. Then I got some exhaust from Pick and Pull 2 for 5 bucks for probably about 10 feet of a tuna quarter exhaust pipe that I used but the thing is is that with that hundred twenty dollars on the intercooler stuff I can easily sell that Gretti blow off valve that I'm not using it's worth 260 bucks if you search it anywhere if I sold it for a hundred dollars that puts me in the hole for 20 bucks there so I reckon that about a hundred dollars on buying the actual important things for the turbo and then probably another hundred dollars that I spent somewhere along the lines I that I didn't keep track of or anything like that. But I'm only in hold two hundred bucks of this turbo kit. It's the wastegate stock on the uh, turbo set at nine pounds. I don't have a boost gauge. I wouldn't know if it's actually at nine pounds or if I got a boost leak or anything like that. But it runs pretty good. It pulls pretty hard. The exhaust is cut a foot inside of the car about a foot and a half because I ran out of this pipe alright and so then my FMU my fuel management that I'm running because you need some sort of fuel management I'm just running stock injectors I'm running a 10 to 1 OMX FMU it's like one of the eBay ones it's like a hundred bucks but I got it on Craigslist for twenty five dollars yeah and I already included that in my price that I gave but then uh it works good. It's way too rich, but I couldn't find anything that wasn't as rich for $25. So I'll probably buy a recalibration kit at some point if I muck up another spark plug set in a reasonable amount of time. Yeah, it, it runs good. Making another video here in a minute. That's just gonna, we're gonna go do some pools, go, uh, go have some fun with it. So let's do a little review. Check it out. Thanks.